Kia ora, I'm David Chasterman, 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news that away from the global geopolitical struggles, it was only an average weekend. Over the week ahead, the key local data is our September labour market situation, which is due on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, New Zealand time, the US Fed will review its monetary policy decision, quickly followed on Saturday by their non-farm payers report for October. And there was a raft of PMI updates this week too, all for October, and a big set of CPI updates are due as well. The most interesting will be from the EU, Korea and Turkey. Japan is also due to review its monetary policy decision this week, as well as some second tier countries like the UK and Brazil. We must not overlook we will get the meat of the global earnings reporting season this week, which could also be influential. But first today, following Friday's surprise surge in the US economic growth, details released over the weekend confirmed the sharper than expected rise in consumer spending there, up 0.7% in September from the prior month. Their core PCE is up 3.7% for the year. So far, with nearly half of the companies reporting, the Wall Street earnings season is developing into a good one, despite some high-profile misses. Of the, four, of the 245 companies in the S&P 500 that have reported earnings so far, 77% of them have beat earnings expectations. In China, profits earned by their big industrial firms fell by 9% from a year earlier in the first nine months of 2023, amid weak demand at home and abroad and persisting margin pressures. The decrease followed an 11.7% slump in the prior period, so the situation is easing. Things have turned up smartly in the past two months, even if they still lag year-ago levels. And Australia has had the same difficulty we had getting the EU to agree to a trade deal despite their better hand. The sticking point was access for agricultural products. The top EU officials are Eastern European with the EU trade chief from Latvia and their agricultural boss from Poland. So expectations should not have been high for the weekend last ditch effort at the ministers meeting at the G7. Not unexpectedly, those talks collapsed. Australia wants access for its farm products, the EU wants access to Australian minerals. But domestic EU politics couldn't bridge the gap. Earlier in 2023, New Zealand took the crumbs of what the EU offered. The Aussies have not. The US Treasury 10-year yield is little changed from this time on Saturday, still at 4.85%. And the price of gold will start today at $2,006 an ounce and up $20 from Saturday to start the week. Oil prices have risen 50 US cents today to be now just under $85 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price has risen more than $1.50, now just under $90 a barrel. But these latest price levels are still lower than a week ago. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 58.1 US cents and marginally softer from Saturday. Against the Aussie, we're holding at 91.8 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're just on 55 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today unchanged at just under 68.2. This time last week it was 68.4, so again, little change. Get more news about the New Zealand.